This 2000 Corvette with only 34,000 miles has a check engine light on for secondary air injection system, and we're gonna fix it. One of the most common check engine lights you might get with a C5 Corvette has to do with various malfunctions of the secondary air injection system. And here's a list of codes you might see. And this list depends a little bit here and there depending on the year of your C5 Corvette. So what the heck is the secondary air injection system and what exactly does it do? Secondary air injection is an emissions system that injects or it actually blows air into the exhaust manifolds on your C5 when you first start it for a short period of time. It does this so that it can help reduce emissions during the relatively cold startup period and it also heats the catalytic converters up much faster so that they can operate at full efficiency much sooner. Fun fact, the C6 Corvettes don't even have a secondary air injection system, and GM did this by moving the catalytic converters forward right next to the engine, and they're literally bolted right to the exhaust manifolds. This heats up the catalytic converters a lot quicker, so much so that it was determined that the air injection system is no longer needed. This is a good thing because it eliminates a whole bunch of parts that can and do fail over time, causing issues in check engine lights, like the issue on the 2005 C5 that we need to fix today. It's also a good thing because eliminating that whole air injection system makes it so that it costs less for GM to build a C6 Corvette, which they may or may not have passed on to the original buyer. There's a couple of negatives that I can think of. Number one, the catalytic converter on the passenger side is really, really close to the starter, which definitely shortens its life. And number two, those catalytic converters being up near the engine bay, I think it leads to hotter engine bay temperatures, which indirectly at times can lead to less horsepower because it increases the temperature of the air at times that enters the engine. Here's a 10,000 foot view of how the air injection system works in the C5 Corvette. When you first start the engine, the engine operates in open loop operation, and the computer energizes the air injection system for anywhere between 30 seconds and 240 seconds, or until the engine enters into closed loop operation. The air injection system is located basically underneath the headlight on the driver's side and when it's functioning with the hood open, you can generally hear it running because it sounds a bit like a vacuum cleaner. Now let's take a closer look at what's going on. Upon startup, the computer initiates the air injection process by triggering two separate things to happen electrically. First, electric is sent through a circuit to turn on the air injection pump's motor. And second, electric is sent to a solenoid that's kind of behind the fender in this general location, which opens the solenoid, and that allows vacuum to come essentially from the engine through a vacuum line, through the solenoid, through more vacuum line, over to a vacuum switch, which is located in front of the driver's side front tire, right next to the air injection pump. This valve is normally closed, which helps prevent any air from getting through the tube into the exhaust manifold when it's not supposed to. It also acts to help prevent any exhaust gas from getting to and damaging the air pump in the event any exhaust gases were to backflow through the system in the event of a one-way exhaust check valve failure. If everything in the air injection system is working as it should, the pump turns on and begins to blow air the electric solenoid in this area opens up, allowing vacuum to flow through the vacuum line, through the solenoid, and all the way over to the control valve by the pump motor. The control valve then opens up, allowing the air from the pump to blow through the tubing into the tubing in the engine bay. From there, the air leads to two different check valves. There's one check valve for each exhaust manifold. The air flows through the check valve, into the exhaust manifold where it mixes with the exhaust gas from the running engine and then it heads to the catalytic converters which are under the car. The air injection system seems simple enough and it is but over time there are multiple things that can happen to the electrical circuit, to the vacuum circuit, to uh, mechanical things like the pump itself or the vacuum lines or the vacuum control valve or 
the exhaust check valves, and any of these things can cause the system to malfunction and give you a check engine light. And with that preamble out of the way, let's get started with the diagnostics on our Subject C5 secondary air injection system. And the first thing I always like to do is pull the diagnostic trouble code for myself from the computer. Always, always, always verify the diagnostic trouble code yourself to avoid going down any unnecessary rabbit holes. So now we have verified that we have a trouble code P0140 and essentially in general terms what this means is that the computer when it tested the system it is expecting to see feedback from both oxygen sensors indicating a lean condition because the pump is running and it's blowing all kinds of extra oxygen into the exhaust which should indicate a lean condition but for some reason the oxygen sensors signals coming back are not indicating a lean condition. I like to start the actual troubleshooting process of the air injection system by using my Autel bidirectional scan tool. First thing I do is go into the air injection system bidirectional controls and I click the button to turn on the air pump and it comes on. Then I back out of that menu and I go into where I can turn the solenoid on. I hit the button for that and I should hear it click. And it does. Next, I disconnect the air injection hose from this union right here in the driver's side of the engine bay. And it usually does separate without much drama at that union. Then I go ahead and start the engine. We should hear the pump running, and I do. And there should be quite a bit of air blowing through this end of the hose that comes from the pump. But there's no air flowing whatsoever, and this is our problem. And since we have the engine running, let's check the other end of the hose and there shouldn't be any exhaust gas blowing through this end of the hose. If there is, it means that one or both of our exhaust check valves are either stuck or frozen and they need to be replaced. If for some reason your air pump and your solenoid do seem to work properly when using the bi-directional scan tool, but they don't seem to operate properly when you start the engine, your computer may have decided that the engine is already warm and turning on the secondary air injection system is not needed. And if this is your situation, go ahead and shut the engine off and let it cool long enough for the coolant temperature to drop below 130 degrees Fahrenheit and then give it another try. So in my situation, we have confirmed that the air pump blower motor is working when we start the engine because we can hear the pump running, but for some reason there is no air blowing through the hose in the engine bay that leads to the check valves and the exhaust manifolds. This means the air pump isn't actually blowing any air even though it's running, or the control valve is broken and not opening, or there isn't any vacuum in the hose attached to the control valve that essentially sucks the valve to open it. Let's find out by opening the access panel in front of the driver's side front tire and performing a few tests. First thing I'm going to do is disconnect the valve from the air pump by undoing this clamp and then using my MK900 scan tool I'll turn on the air pump to confirm if it's actually blowing air and it is. Now that we know the air pump works well I'm going to reconnect the control valve to the pump and then go ahead and remove the hose coming from the control valve. Now using my Mighty Vac vacuum pump, I will apply a vacuum to the valve to see if it holds vacuum, and it does. And now once again using my Autel scan tool, I will turn on the pump and then open the control valve with the Mighty Vac to make sure it opens, allowing air to pass through it. Plenty of air. And it does. So this line is a vacuum line. It goes over, I believe, um, behind the passenger side tire by the computer there's a solenoid that turns it on and then supplies vacuum to this line. So we're going to start the car now and with the scan tool we'll open up that solenoid and see if we have vacuum here or not. Absolutely no vacuum coming to here. So you can shut it off, shut the engine off and everything. No vacuum whatsoever getting to this line. So we're going to go take it apart over there and see if we have a hole somewhere in this vacuum line or what's going on over in this general area behind the passenger side wheel. All right, we're behind the passenger side front tire. This is where the vacuum source is. 
The solenoid is right up there. You can barely see it. This line coming down, this goes to the source of vacuum, which is actually over here. You can see it right there. And I took that off and very simply with my mouth, I applied vacuum to this while opening and closing the solenoid valve with the scan tool and it opens and closes. So, I, you know, with it open, I can suck through this up to the solenoid valve, presumably to the front of the car. And when it closes, then I can't. So it tells me the integrity between the source of the vacuum and the solenoid valve is good. So now I'm going to track it from the solenoid valve towards the air pump on the front left driver's side corner. Okay, I've got my finger over the hole up by the solenoid. Go ahead and pump that. And you can see that it's pulling a vacuum. So that line is uh, connected 100% with no holes all the way to the solenoid. And I'm gonna let my finger off and boom, there it goes. So now we know the problem has to be. Here's the source of our vacuum that goes to the solenoid. So now that I know the solenoid has integrity with the vacuum line all the way to the air pump area, I just want to make sure the source of vacuum, which is the this right here, that we have vacuum here. If we don't have vacuum here, then we have to trace it backwards from here and figure out why we don't have vacuum to here. All right, so I've got my finger here. He's going to start it, and we're going to see if there's vacuum here. Go ahead. Nothing. No vacuum here whatsoever. So that's, we got to go back from this area right here now. So I don't think we're getting any vacuum down here. And it gets the vacuum from the back of the intake manifold. Which travels underneath the battery. And it's a well-known location that gets damaged from acid and from being brittle. And as we determined in a previous visit with this vehicle, this car has had some work done for acid damage, clearly. So I'm starting to suspect we're going to find a cracked line underneath the battery. So let's take the battery out and then the plastic tray that holds it. Below the battery is this composite tray that is bolted to a metal frame extension. There are three bolts that secure the tray and need to be removed. With the tray removed right away, I can see that someone has previously replaced the nylon plastic vacuum line that should be attached to the rear of the intake manifold, running to the area directly under the battery, and then down to the junction by the computer. By the way, here is a vacuum diagram I found posted on Corvette Forum by Speedy Z of the vacuum port junction down by the computer, and here, almost 20 years later, it is still helping people fix their C5s. Everything looks accurate to me, by the way. I removed this line from the T down by the computer and pulled it up so we can see it. I put the battery back in and as we can see with the engine running there is no vacuum being sucked through it whatsoever. Furthermore it is blocked as I am not able to suck or blow through it. You really cannot see where it is supposed to be attached to the rear of the intake manifold so I'm going to use the Depstec DS650 scope to take a look and this image tells me it's still connected. I'm 90% sure the vacuum port on the back of the intake manifold is supposed to be open, but I don't have one on the shelf to be sure, so I asked a YouTube buddy of mine if he had an LS intake on the shelf, and he does as he's done a ton of LS stuff on his channel, and he was kind enough to go the extra mile and make this quick video for me. So here, take a look, and thank you very much, Steve. I appreciate it. Uh, trying to help out a buddy of mine at the YouTube channel Toys for Life. I guess he's working on a, helping to troubleshoot on a car LS1 powered that has a, or at least has a LS1 intake manifold on it. And he's thinking that maybe the port for the HVAC system, which should be this guy right here, is blocked. Um, I don't know how that could happen other than obviously foreign debris getting in there. So the question was is does this flow freely? pretty sure you can see this through the port or the throttle body yep so that answers that question so when you go to check this video out Ken you can see you can see the piece of red wire 
all the way at the back of the intake manifold. This port right here should be wide open to vacuum. So that's blowing in. And you can suck uh, through this. Brake booster side. Definitely wide open. So I think the copper line that someone installed years ago is still likely connected to the port on the back of the manifold, but I suspect that port is clogged, perhaps with debris from the plastic vacuum line that disintegrated likely years ago as a result of a battery acid leak. And here's the thing, this owner bought the car about a year ago last fall, and it had a check engine light on when he first got it. He brought it into the dealer that he bought it from, and I think they put a new air pump in it and called it good but the check engine light is still on. So the bottom line is he really doesn't know how long it's had an air injection system issue. So rather than removing the intake manifold and attempting to drill out the port on the back of it, instead I've opted to tap into the brake booster line, which is exactly what's been done on my C5 Corvette, where the brake booster line has been tapped into to supply a vacuum line for the booster pump and a vacuum line for the supercharger blow off valve both of which were included in my a a supercharger kit. So here's the vacuum line I've tapped into the brake booster line with. It runs across the back of the motor to down below the battery, and then finally to the vacuum tee that is down by the computer. Now all I have to do is reinstall the battery and put everything else back together, and then test the system to confirm we have a verified fix. With the engine running, we now have air flowing through the tube in the engine bay, and with the Autel MK900, we can scan the system and test it just like the car's computer would. So now I just started the C5 and the scan tool is simply monitoring what the computer is doing this time instead of controlling it. I wanna make sure that the car's computer has turned on the air pump and the solenoid, which it has, and both of the primary oxygen sensors are reading lean, which they are, and then I'll watch for 30 seconds to 240 seconds until the computer turns off the pump and the solenoid. And when that happens, the primary oxygen sensor's voltage should bounce above and below 450 millivolts, and they do. That's it for this one, guys. If you happen to live in the Twin Cities area of Minnesota and you're having any kind of secondary air injection issues with your C5, shoot me an email and maybe we can work something out. Oh, and since you made it to the end, please hit that thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And most of all, thanks for watching.